the results that I will be showing you today are really the results of group effort um, that we uh, collected and made uh, with this bunch of wonderful scientists. So um, the West Antarctic Rift System divides the Antarctic continent, uh, separates the East Antarctic plate, this cratonic old and thick plate from the West Antarctic stretched plate. Um, on one side, it connects to a triple junction, ridge, ridge, triple junction, and the other side is connected to around the peninsula Antarctic uh, peninsula area. It connects with the subduction zone. Um, the total amount of extension across the rift system uh, is um, thought to be around 500 kilometers. And motion started at around um, the Jurassic time, around 180 million years ago, uh, marked by the emplacement of the fair large igneous province. Um, the evolution of the rift system has major geodynamical implications, um, which I'll be discussing today, but it also um, influenced the paleotopography, um, the viscosity of the mantle, and development of, uh, <clears throat> um, you know, the um, influence, the heat flow under the ice. So it has a lot of climatical uh, in implications. Um, but I will focus today uh, my talk on the kinematics of the rift and how it influenced the uh, different geological processes that acted, uh, in particular during the, uh, the, late the latest stages of rifting. Um, so the early phase of uh, rifting involved diffuse deformation, which has been localized in the latest stages to the western side of the Ross Sea and along the trans Antarctic mountains. Um, rifting uh, created this deep sedimentary basins and sub ice um, basins and troughs. It also um, um, created um, um, extensive volcanic activity and uh, resulted in the uplift of the Transantarctic Mountains. Um, the northern edge of the rift system at the, at, during the Eocene and Oligocene, as I will uh, show you in, in the next slide, uh, resulted in the formation of um, seafloor spreading, uh, which you can see here, the fossil spreading axis up in the northwest corner of the Ross Sea. Um, so on the left here, you can see a um, magnetic anomaly map of the western side of the Ross Sea. So you, the coastline is shown by the white line here. Um, and the shelf edge is shown up here. So this is the Southwest Pacific area. Um, you can see these beautiful marine magnetic anomalies, these lineated features, um, <clears throat> which propagate into the rift. So uh, this is the um, fossil spray nexus that, was, that I was uh, showing you before. Um, this is here on the right, you can see a, a profile across these um, magnetic anomalies. Uh, you can see this uh, symmetrical pattern of anomalies, which we dated uh, to, um, to be the, the oldest anomalies are, are 18 old, uh, around 40 million years old anomalies. And the youngest most ones are uh, dated to be around 26 million years old. So syphilis spreading, um, lasted between 43 and up to 26 million years ago uh, with ultra slow um, spraying rates. Um, the total opening, uh, total amount of extension here in the other basin uh, was estimated to be around 170 kilometers. Um, 
interestingly, there, there are uh, two little passive margins in the south side of the Adair Basin, which are marked by um, very rapid transition from the continental crust into the oceanic uh, crust. Um, okay, we, we have used these marine magnetic anomalies and the anomalies on the two other arms that were connected through the triple junction. So the Southeast Indian Ridge um, anomalies and, 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 and the Australia West Antarctic anomalies to solve simultaneously the rotation poles that um, bring these anomalies back together. And you can see here the uh, East-West Antarctic rotation poles for this Eocene Oligocene time period. Um, so we know that seafloor spreading has lasted in the Eocene Oligocene time, but we also know from GPS measurements that the rift system is no longer active. In fact, also this, there, there are no um, tectonically related earthquakes within the continent. So altogether suggesting that the rift is no longer active. Um, and, and the question is then whether there was any motion after the um, seafloor spending assist in the other basin. Um, there are indications for a younger um, extensional motions within the rift system. For instance, uh, you can see in the seismic profile how the sediments on top of the oceanic crust in the other basin are being faulted and extended by normal faults. Uh, there are also other online indications of um, normal faulting that um, offset young volcanic dikes. So we know these faults must have been active during the Miocene time. Also the terror rift, it's a tiny rift uh, that have been um, formed during the Miocene and also sub ice uh, troughs uh, from seismic observations. We know that there are no sediments within the troughs suggesting that they were formed after the ice sheet was already covered this area, meaning that they must have been formed after the, um, during or after the Miocene. Okay, so we know that there, there is young, relatively young motion across the rift system, um, but we have no seafloor spreading at that period of time. So uh, in order to, um, to study this uh, cessation of rifting uh, and, um, um, so we looked on the magnetic anomalies that confine the northern edge of the rift system. So you can see here in the, in the lower right corner, the Adair Basin, and you see the magnetic isochrons <clears throat> across the Southeast Indian Ridge. Now we did this exercise where we rotated the Australian isochrons to their conjugate uh, anomalies. Now, if the rift was not active, then the isochrons should perfectly match their conjugate parts west and east of the Baleni fracture zone, which marks the northern extension of the rift system. And, and, and as you can see, these young, two young isochrons, so the 3AY young and five old isochrons, six and 11 million years old isochrons fit, fit perfectly each other on both sides of the fracture zone, suggesting that the rift was not active uh, during the last 11 million years. However, when, you, when we look on older isochrons, they fit nicely just on the west side of the, of the fracture zone, but on the east of the fracture zone, you can see how they are not fitting the observed isochrons. So um, the 19 million year isochron is missing, is uh, misfit, it's conjugate by 45 kilometers and the 
26 millennial isochron is misfitted by 60 kilometers. So, um, and also interestingly, um, you can see how the northern edge of the rift propagated to the north. There are these reworked features, the Belene vol um, volcanic islands here, and this um, mashed sort of gravity signature up here, which are seems to you know, uh, look quite similar to what we see in the um, Rodriguez tree projection in the Indian Ocean where the Southwest Indian ridges has been propagated um, and, and, and it created these triangle features which looks quite similar to what we see here. So we use these marine magnetic anomalies to compute the rotation pole that quantified the last bit of motion uh, for the Miocene time, this is the red pole here, and the black poles are the um, is the pole that shows you the Eocene Oligocene uh, period. Um, so, what we learn from this exercise is um, what we see is that the during the Eocene uh, Oligocene time, uh, motion uh, uh, was relatively fast. Um, the, the pole of rotation was located near the center of the rift system, and then it drifted away and motion has slowed down until rifting has ceased 11 million years ago. Um, and we see um, similar um, behavior prior to the cessation of, uh, of motion on other divergent plate boundaries, for instance, west of Mexico, the um, Pacific uh, Fairland Ridge uh, has been uh, uh, ceased and just after the plate motion has been changing, the kinematic has changed. You can see that in the abyssal hill fabric and also the change in the orientation of the magnetic anomalies. So it seems to be a process um, common to other uh, places where the, where, where the plate boundaries start being active. Um, we can use these rotation poles to predict the, the formation pattern, the uh, relative plate motion across the rift system. So uh, the fact that the rotation poles have been located close to the center of the rift system uh, means that the uh, one side of the rift system, the, Re the Ross Sea sector has influenced, has, I mean, um, has been governed by extensional motion while the center part of the rift system had almost no extensional motion, but some strike slip motion. And the other side of the rift system uh, inf um, had, um, mostly oblique convergence motion. Um, somewhat similar pattern uh, is uh, being taking place right now. And these are the um, geodetic um, rotation pole for that describe the motion between Sinai microplate and Nubia plate. Um, so uh, on one side of the plate boundary, Along the Swiss Rift, the, the motion is mostly uh, extensional, uh, oblique extensional motion, while the other side of the uh, plate boundary is, uh, um, um, is mostly a convergence motion. So again, looks similar to what we see in the uh, West Antarctic Rift system. Wait, there's about uh, we know minutes left. Okay. Okay. We know we know that during rifting, um, the transantarctic mountain has been uplifted. You can see that in the fishing track data, and the mechanism that was suggested for the uplift of the transantarctic mountain on one side was flexural uplift, while on the other side, it seems that different process, different mechanism, um, has been uh, taken place that uplifted transantarctic mountains there, which in, uh, involved lithospheric foundering, 
which also might be related, might be um, influenced by the convergence motion there. And the last point I'd like to make is that um, the red dots that you see here is the uh, vol Miocene volcanic activity that took place during rifting. And it seems that the Ross Sea, the Western Ross Sea, uh, where we have extension, localized extension, so you can see the volcanism sort of follow that pattern. But the other side, uh, the volcanism has been distributed across the entire rift system. And the center of the rift system had no volcanic activity. This is um, a similar pattern of high heat flow values on the two, two end sides of the rift system and no, I mean, low heat flow values uh, in the center of the rift system also seems to be connected with the fact that the rotation pores were um, located near the center of the rift system. Uh, so yeah, um, you can read the summary while you ask me questions. So thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, any questions? If yes, you can just type Q in the chat. And while you think about one, I have one. So I actually have two. So can you speculate a bit on the driving forces that drove uh, the Western Arctic Rift and why they changed over time? Why did it, so why did it, extend in the first place and why did it die out afterwards? Um, yeah, so both the um, the studying of the seafloor spreading in the Eocene, so the last pulse of major plate motion, uh, during that period of time there was um, major plate reorganization in the south Pacific, so it seems to be related to, you know, other kinematic processes that took place around in the area, and also the 11 million years old event, the cessation of, of rifting uh, is a period of time when the, um, the alpine fault in New Zealand and the uplift of the mountains there has been started. So again, seems to be related to other um, kinematic uh, event that took place. Now, the reason for that, the, I mean, the driving force for these two events, I'm not sure there has been um, different speculations, but I mean, could be related to a few different processes. So I'm not sure really which one of them is correct. Um, but yeah, so. Okay, 